Good afternoon, lovelies. Carla Nicole. How are you guys? Hope everybody is doing well. It is the final episode of the Alone series. I'm sad to see it go, but hey, you know, um, I'm real excited today because I know um, those who stuck with me on this on this uh, journey of being alone and and uh, you know they did the work you know what I'm saying they they rolled their sleeves up they rolled with me you know you guys you guys today is graduation day you know so it's exciting right I mean hey you did the inner work you did the uh, the self assessments you made sure that you went out and you took the time for you you obligated and dedicated yourself to your self growth. You spent time in uh, finding out what makes you content. Hey, Myron. Hey, Myron. Hey, Myron. Welcome to our group, by the way. So glad you're a part of it. And everybody watching, please, please, please be a, be a part of the Live with Carla Nicole group. So go check it out and make sure that you send me a request to be a part of that because I am making sure that I'm cultivating souls. And um, to do that, I have. I have something up my sleeve to build a network of people that, um, you know, are, are supporting of what I do. So uh, make sure you, you join. And so I want to welcome you personally, Myron, to my group. Um, I'm very excited about that. So welcome, everybody. I see you, Ahmed, and L Lyrical, and James. Welcome, loves. Glad you're here. So um, today is the final episode of uh, the Alone series. You know, um... Wow, it has been 16 episodes that I've done about being alone, and I'm, I'm going to be 110% transparent. I was not happy when the Spirit told me to do this series. I was like, really? Nobody wants to be alone. How am I supposed to do this? But I'm glad I did, because I learned, as well as uh, having many people inbox me about how it transformed their life, so, you know... When you're obedient to what God gives you, you just, you're blessed. So I am out here in, in the nature. It's a, a kayak area where people have their, their kayaks and they come out here and they do their thing. But it's so pretty today. No one's probably out here for a while. Won't be out here probably till around June. So I kind of have um, my own space and, and can sit here and just kind of vibe with you guys. So... Listen, I want to talk about the graduation day of doing all the work. You know, a lot of you have, like I said, you, you, you rolled your sleeves up and you allowed me to take your hand through being alone, but yet focus on how you can still be the best you. And when you are the best you, you are so amazed at what you can find in yourself to actually give to others. What I love about what Ayanla Van Zant said recently, she said, you know, when you really um, edify yourself and you take the time to get to know you, you take the time to uh, sharpen your edges uh, and, and you get a little more focused on what it is you truly want out of life, you know, um, you're able to pour out to others because you've done the work. And so those of you that have rolled with me on the Alone Series knows y'all did some work. We took notes, man. We took many, many notes. We spent a lot of time conversating back and forth. A lot of you have given me, you know, a lot of things that I didn't think about just with your, um, your uh, dialogue back and forth with me about what your struggles are, what you deal with. Being alone is not always the funnest part. But if you're alone... And you're working on you and you're and you're cultivating um, different things in your life to where you're excited to be alive um, it, it, it's it's the most gratifying gift you can give yourself but now that you know you did all the work I want y'all to think about something what's next <laughs> you know what I'm saying what's next love like what is next? We have done the work. We have talked about how do we get content. We talked about how do we um, make sure that we're not blaming others. We talked about so many things just over the time over the time spent. We talked about how do we clean out our baggage. How do we 
how do we do so many things? And, and it was powerful because those of you that rolled with me and stuck with me through the series, you guys did the work. So today's the graduation day of that. So now I want you guys to think about something. You know, now that you've done all the work um, and you put, you put yourself first, now it's time to open yourself up to a new life. You know, because um, I want you guys to think about something, and this is very important. Um, you know, when you're alone, it is um, symbolic to being in hibernation. So why I think you should think about a bear hibernating is because when a bear hibernates, there's a focus on nothing but survival and thinking about self. And yet still edifying and still breathing, but breathing so shallow that no one knows he is breathing. So that's what that is. You're in a solitude. You're in a focus on you. You're, on, you're trying to figure out what is it I need to do to replenish my life. So once you come out of hibernation, now what? What do we be excited about now? You know what I'm saying? This is important. I want y'all to get this. Because after the alone time... And after the alone season is over, what is it you need to focus on next? So this is what's important, people. I want you to get this because this is very vitally important. What do you focus on next? And that is being open. Being open to having a new social uh, circle. Okay, so be, be, um, be excited about now trying to open yourself up to a new, a new social circle. You did the work. So you did all the inner works of uh, self, self care and you did all this work. So now focus on what's next. So what is next? Like I say, cultivate your new social circle. How do you do that if you haven't been out for a while, right? Well, first of all, social media is great. It's a great start. So um, finding a way to um, Build new friendships. Um, and I think that that's important. You know, um, those of you that not only sh has been with me through the Alone series, but you also went with me through the Relationship series, knows that I'm big about cultivating uh, friendships before getting into relationships. So now that you're alone, you know, you may be, and your alone season's over, you may be now wanting to... Um, find love again hey it's okay give yourself permission permissions are important a lot of times we don't give ourselves permission to love <laughs> give ourselves permission to be to be gloomy and sad and depressed and miserable but we don't give ourselves permission to love again you can love again and Ellen if you are in need of a so social circle Inbox me after this this show because I got something I think that might help you with that um, So like I said um, You've done the work so you deserve to have love in your life And I'm not just talking about a love life, but love in your life. That means having some friends man you know um, Being social is not always easy for everyone. You know, there's introverts. There's people that are extroverts and those that are introverts tend to be a little shy, you know, um, they've been kind of out of the loop for a while, so they don't know really how do you start a conversation. These are things that you need to kind of uh, sharpen a little bit. So you're going to have to go into the unknown. Are y'all ready to go into the unknown? Huh? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go into the unknown. Okay? Unknown is scary, people. It's not the easiest thing to get into. Jumping into a pool of people I did about maybe three years ago and I have now cultivated this this group of people that jump on my lives Tell me that you know what I'm doing is great and keep doing it. So, you know, um, I jumped into a pool of people <laughs> Unknown to me. I didn't know them and I've learned to cultivate friendships um, You know the thing about friends is you know you don't want a bunch of yes people in your life. You don't want a bunch of cheerleaders or groupies. What you want is you want to have somebody in your life, friends now, that are uh, going to be honest with you. They're going to be uh, 
definitely someone that you can lay, you know, cry with. Sometimes we have that time when we have to cry. We got to get that out. So we need to have people. You need to build your cir- your cir- your bleh, your social circle now because you've been alone. You did the work. I'm so proud of you guys, man. You've done the work, so I'm proud of that. So now it's time to jump into the pool of unknown. Get a little, get a little, I mean, hey, look, I'll tell you what you can do. For those of you that have not been social for a while, go out on your own. Maybe go to a restaurant, sports bar, just get to mingling with people. When you go out to the grocery store, you go to different places, start speaking to people, say hello, how are you? You know, a lot of times we act like we don't want to talk to nobody. We don't want to say hello. We don't want to be, we don't want to be friendly. Open yourself up, man. Show yourself to other people because at the end of the day, life is not about being in seclusion. And aloneness is not about seclusion. It was about doing the self-work. But the seclusion that you were in was for a purpose. But now... (laughs) Now that you've done the work, you don't have to be in that seclusion anymore. You can now cultivate friendships, relationships. And you can do it in a way because you have now touched base with yourself. You know what your love, you know what your needs are. Okay? You know what you desire. You know what you what you would like to see in your life. So start formulating in your mind what you want your friends to be to you. Okay? But first you gotta be that yourself to yourself okay we talked about that so you want to learn to now figure out a way how do I become social with people it is okay to speak to people and be friendly there's no reason why we have to be like I don't want to say nothing to nobody no be you a lot of people out here especially souls that I see are out here invisible or they feel invisible they're not invisible they're just not they're just not um, coming out of their shell they, they have fear they're scared they, they don't know oh, should I come out and be friendly to people yes be friendly to people there's a lot of miserable souls out here but you can make a difference just by a smile hello how are you today oh man I see that you know I see that you're picking that chicken well I'm, I'm looking to make chicken too girl what are you making have some fun man we spend a lot of time being all caught up in, oh, I don't want to speak to people. I don't want to, I don't want to go anywhere else but to home and to work. No, make yourself more outgoing. Get get into the get into the point where you're like, you know what? I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Remember we talked about this on one of my on one of the episodes. You have to shock your system into doing something that you're not always doing all the time because what happens is you replenish your soul because you become more vibrant. Let me tell you something about depression, okay? A lot of people that were alone during my series were full of depression, full of sadness, full of anger, full of bitterness. And let me tell you something about that. You know what it does to your spirit? First of all, it makes your spirit very heavy and weighted. Okay, so you have a weighted spirit, and do you know what a weighted spirit does? It doesn't. It doesn't shine. It's not vibrant, and you can walk right past a weighted soul because they're not casting off energy. See what I'm saying? Thanks, Ron. Appreciate you. You're not casting off an energy that's exciting for someone to want to engage you. So pick your head up, pull your shoulders back, be happy you're on the planet. Do you know how important it is to be on the planet and being vibrant? You know, just because you were alone or are alone doesn't mean you have to be miserable. So we need to think about this for a second. It's vitally important that you don't let depression, sadness, bitterness, anger, anguish to uh, basically choke the life out of your spirit because it does hey sis appreciate that Audra. it's choking the life out of your spirit because you're sad you're angry you're not happy you're not you're not feeling a thirst or or, or a uh, quest for life and so what happens is you're just humdrum well people don't gravitate towards humdrum so you know what you got to do first of all you have to be thankful you're here <laughs> number one number two Remember we talked about contentment in our last episode. 
self-contentment is so important is so important because when you have a contentment in your on the inside you have a freedom you have a freedom because you're like man I don't need anything physical I don't need anything financial I don't need anybody around me to feel like I'm not enough on the planet you can be enough I'm telling you so in order to be enough you have to begin to look at yourself and understand that energy carries. So energy, first of all, energy precedes action. So energy precedes action. So what does that mean? If you're negative or sad or upset or just not excited about life, people can feel that. Did you know that? People can feel that and they won't gravitate towards you. But have you ever went around someone that is so full of life and energy? You're like, oh my God, I cannot stop wanting to be around this person. This around them. Uh, let me tell you, it, I, I just have to be around them because they give me energy. They give me excitement. They make me feel like life is so amazing. So we have to understand that when we are um, alone and trying to get back into the social life, trying to build new social circles, considering a new love life, we have to have a radiance. How do you get a radiance? You have to be hungry. Okay? You have to be hungry and you have to be excited about life. You can't walk around here grim. You can't walk around here sad and miserable because that doesn't attract anybody but maybe people that have that same mindset. And do you really want a whole bunch of miserable people around you? I would hope not. <laughs> so I wanted you guys to just think about this really quick. It's very important that you take the time out and look to see what your next season is. You know, um... When we're alone, like I said, we have to we have to really work on us. But we've done that already. We've already we've already taken the time out to um, work on our character flaws and work on our stuff that may not be all that great. And so, because we've done the work, we can now refresh and get excited about life. So, um, for those of you that don't have a really big social circle. Um, Listen, I'm building a, a circle, a network of people right now, me personally, uh, and it's called the Wisdom Focus Group. And it is a group of people that are like-minded and uh, believe that what they have in their life, be it perspective, be it experience, be it wisdom, they, can, they would like to share with other people. And you are more than welcome to be a part of this membership. It's one awesome thing. It's definitely one way to kind of get out of your shell if you haven't been <laughs> out here really um, mingling with people to kind of help you to um, have a newfound you. You know, a lot of times when someone is shy or hasn't really uh, been open to, you know, being social or, or meeting new friends, uh, there's a fear there. You know that? There's a fear. Okay? So, when you have a fear, it's a fear that you won't be accepted. But you know what you have to do when you have a fear? You have to face it. And matter of fact, not only do you have to face it, you have to go in with both feet <laughs> and not even look back. I mean, literally, it's like jumping off of a bridge into an ocean of people you don't know. Some may like you, some may not. Some may embrace you, some may not. But it's okay. See, the beautiful thing about it is when you learn that in this lifetime, there may come people that don't care for you. And that's fine. There may be people that love you to death. And that's great because those people you want to surround yourself around. Because sometimes we have personalities that are a little more, um, they're just not as vibrant. So we, it, it takes us 
to be around someone for a while before we kind of open up to who we are because we just like to learn who we are showing that part or side to so we're, 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 we're a little more reluctant to just show who, this is who I am and stand in it but that comes with practice see remember I told you when it comes to aloneness we had to practice that it wasn't easy was it <laughs> to be alone and embrace it it wasn't easy but you did it so now that you've done that it's fine but now it's time to see what your next season is what's the next step what's my next step to exciting new world and exciting new experience so do you have a vision I want you guys to think about that what's your vision now what do you see yourself as in the next couple of months do you see your social circle do you see maybe a, a, a intimate partner do you see yourself doing things you never thought you would do are you seeing those things because understand this when you see it and visualize it it will come to life as long as you are open okay let's talk about being open for a second <laughs> being open hey Dwight welcome love let's talk about being open okay so being open means I'm open to establishing new friendships new relationships without uh, hesitancy without being reluctant without being suspicious that's what openness means are y'all ready for that <laughs> suspicion reluctance and hesitance is because of suspicion um, and to be suspicious about things that you have no control over is not necessarily to your benefit you're gonna want to open yourself up allow yourself to be who you are in all facets allow yourself to get to know others that you maybe would have never known you know the beautiful thing about social media and like I said use this platform um, to meet different people because you know I've met so many people um, across the nation and outside of the nation I have some Nigerian friends and people from the UK and you know um, just other places that I've actually built friendships with with, with various people um, in the world when you do that you find that we're really not that different <laughs> we're really not that different we're actually a lot more alike than we than we give others credit for so you want to make sure that you're not so um, closed off you have to begin to like I said do some things that you would never have done challenge yourself see um, one of the things that I notice with women I'm gonna pick on us a little bit is we have a tendency to get in awe over handsome men and then we don't know how to act or react to them or, or or anything we're like oh my god he's so hot and I don't know what to do and and we tend to think that oh my god he's so sexy and but when you start to uh, meet various different handsome men that have some type of vision and they got a mindset and they're they got goals and they got they got achievements they've made when you start engaging with men you never thought would give you a second look your confidence rises <laughs> that applies to you gents too y'all gents that think all oh, these model looking ladies oh my god she wouldn't t let, give me a time of day you'd be surprised start surrounding yourself with beautiful women do you know why it takes away the fear but but when you're around those souls you start to appreciate them not just off of their external beauty either start to t start to take some time and pay attention to what they can give you outside of just their physical beauty because you'll find ooh, this woman is not only beautiful and you can take her and put her in a calendar but this woman right here she is an amazing woman 
when you do that, your fear starts to diminish. Because now you're seeing where the beautiful woman is just a part of her. Her looks is just a part of her. Her soul is what matters. Her intellect, her purpose, her spiritual awakening, that's what matters. And that applies to men as well. So when we get away from getting so caught up in, well, I can't talk to him or I can't talk to her because she's really pretty or he's really handsome, that's silly. Pretty and handsome don't mean nothing if they don't have no soul. <laughs> There's a lot of soulless fine people out here or, or uh, very ugly souls out here that may have a very handsome or pretty external uh, body or appearance. So we have to be mindful that we can change the planet when we stop getting so fearful of doing something that we never would have done before. You see somebody attractive to your eyes? Speak to them. Hello, how are you? And you might find that that person is not only beautiful on the outside, but beautiful on the inside as well. And then they may do something in your life you never thought, like <laughs> empower you, encourage you, give you some, oh my God, things you never could imagine. And you'll be like, oh, I, I never thought that this person would be this amazing in my life. I thought they were just going to be somebody I would, I would appreciate their looks. But nah, it's, it's more than that. So, you know, it's, a, it's very important that we spend time investing in getting to know what it is we really desire for ourselves. How do we do that? How do we do that? How do we, how do we really desire or, or attain what we want? First, you got to see it visually. So when in your mind after doing all this work, do you see? Your alone season's over. You've done all the work. So now what? Whatever that picture is in your mind right now, I want you to embrace it. I don't care if it seems unattainable. Nothing's unattainable. Except your will to do and focus on it. That's the only thing unattainable is when you don't focus and believe it. You know, Tyrese Gibson used to say, faith is invisible stairs so you got to take each step even though the stairs aren't there you got to take each, each step each step each step towards that vision whatever it is that you want to do or become or have or desire don't let that don't let that that vision that you have to to falter or to or to die because you deserve it see the problem about it is I think a lot of times in this lifetime, we, we want things and we desire things, but we really don't sit down and think to ourselves, huh, I don't know if I believe I should have these things. So <laughs> you have the vision right there before you because when I just asked you what you saw, you had a vision pop in your mind. But the, it, what it is, is it's the self Oh, I don't, it's self-doubt. I don't know. I don't know if I can get that. Well, that's going to stop you from getting that. Believe in it. I'm telling you, believe in what you can do. Believe in what you can attain. Believe that you can have what it is you visually desire. You got to believe it first. See, the beautiful thing about our thoughts is they came from our spirit. So now, um, with that, you must um, take it and truly embrace it and then do it. Now, anybody that knows me knows that I'm doing the Wisdom Focus Group. And one of the members of the Focus Group is Lindsay Crawford. She's on here now. And I like what she said to what I just said, which is, many don't want to put in the work. Uh-oh. <laughs> Many don't want to put in the work. Is that what it is, guys? Y'all don't want to put the work in? You just want it to appear, huh? I don't want to do the work. Just, just let me get this vision and then it's all good. Well, nothing comes like that. <laughs> nothing comes like that. You have to do the work, man. And that means 
you know, um, if you see something in your mind that you want, you got to start placing energy towards that. And if you have a vision, you have to say yes to it. You say, yes, I'm deserving of this. Yes, this is what I want. And then if you're anybody that is, has a spiritual life or you have a, a prayer that you say or you believe in God, hey, tell God, look, this is what I want and this is how I see it and help me to help myself attain that. That's a, that's a great prayer in and of itself. You can do it. It just takes time to acquire it. So you have to, like Lindsay said, plan, practice, get focused on what you truly, truly, truly want. And when you do that, you'll find when it shows up and you have it, you're like, wow. See, the power of this is when we were alone, I didn't tell you guys to be alone and focus on you so you could get a relationship. Remember that? I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you to do everything I tell you to do so you can get somebody in your bed every night. I didn't tell you or promise you that either. But what I did say is focus on you, right? And get content. By you doing the work for you and nobody else, actually, now is the time that you can say, hey, I'm open now. I'm ready. I'm ready to be in a relationship. I'm ready to be in, in a social circle. I'm ready to have friends. A lot of people don't know, you gotta be ready to have friendships. But not just any old friendship. You want friendships with people that are honest with you. That aren't just gonna be yes people to you in your life. But there's someone that says, oh, that's wrong, you're not doing that right. Or you may wanna consider this instead of that. So when you encourage yourself to um, have this vision to come to life, you will find the beauty of it. And you will see so clearly, like, man, I didn't realize my life has changed because I did the work. You know? That's one of the beautiful gifts about doing the work. The beautiful gift about taking your time to encourage other people. You know what's so funny is when you encourage other people, you're actually healing yourself. Hey, David, welcome. So, you know, I really hope you guys love the Alone series. I know I love doing it. I had a blast with it. Um, but I just want you guys now to understand that season's over. We did the work. Um, and you can now um, be open to having a social having a social circle, having someone wrap their arms around you and care about you um, platonic in a platonic space or in a loving space. You can have that. You deserve it. You've done the work. Also, um, so since this is the last episode of the Alone series, just to give you a, back, a backdrop on what's coming next, we're doing the forgiveness series yet. <laughs> next, are you ready? Forgiveness series which was inspired again by Lindsay. She, she uh, reached out to me while I was in the middle of the Alone series and said, hey, um, you know, uh, I've been spiritually led to tell you that your next series will be the Forgiveness series. And I thought, oh God. <laughs> I wasn't as fearful as I was with the Alone series, but still, it's a series. So it's got to, I have to have some in-depth, um, meditative time I have to have God's guidance to help me with this one um, because you know forgiving is easier said than done right we're not always easy to forgive but you know uh, once we begin to practice 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 forgiveness then we'll find ourselves like wow my life is lighter I'm not as heavily weighted anymore because I lightened my spirit by forgiving some things. And not just people, things, experiences, situations, people. <laughs> so those are things we have to focus on and be mindful of. You know, in this life, we're here to make a difference. But not only make a difference, but also um, lead by example. 
we lead by example and show people how important life is and how thirsty love is, it, it, it's a whole different experience. We enjoy it. All right? So, again, I hope everything, yes, like you said ourselves, we have to be excited about life. We have to be really encouraging each other because if we don't, it's not the same, you know. But, like I said, for those of you that don't have a social circle, please inbox me. I will give you some information on how to become a member and help you to uh, kind of jump into that pool of unknown. Pool of unknown is okay. You know, you're going to open some new doors. You're going to meet some new friends. You're going to meet some new people of the opposite sex. Uh-oh. Uh, they may be handsome or you're attracted to. Hey, have fun with it, man. You know, there's no reason why you can't be thirsty and excited for life. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us will sit at home and cuddle around by ourselves and not believe we can do it. You can do it. You can have fun. You can have a male friend. You can have a female friend. You can have a boo. You can have a bae. You can have all that. You did the work. So y'all can do that. All right. That, I'm giving y'all permission if you're not giving the permission to yourself. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the Alone series. I really do. Because it's been so much fun for me. And it, it, hopefully it's been life changing for you. Um, but uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I am. I'm so excited. And I'm hungry for life. I want you guys hungry for life. I want you guys excited about life. You only got one life to live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, at least on the physical side. But, you know, enjoy it while you got it. Show up. Show up to life. I tell you guys that all the time. Hey, look at this. I don't even know what kind of bird this is, but it's beautiful. Hold on, I'm going to show you guys. Look. Can you see him? Look at that. Wow, can you guys see that? Look. Wow. Now you see how she took off? That's what you guys need to do. Take off and live life. Get your love, get your get your friends and live. You did the work. I'm proud of you guys for sticking with me. Next one's forgiveness, and we can do it. We're going to take it like we took this, took this on. So, hey, I'm out of here. I hope you guys share this video, and um, let me tell you, on to the next phase, right? All right, guys, happy Sunday. Love you guys with pieces and hugs. Bye. Take care, loves. Bye.